David Dimleby's sense of mischief, generosity and political knowledge means he is one of the greatest broadcasters of all time. The first time I realized just how big a deal Question Time was happened maybe a month after I'd started as a producer on the program when former BNP leader Nick Griffin appeared in 2009. When I arrived for the recording, there were hundreds of protesters outside BBC Television Center, it had been all over the national news for weeks, I wasn't allowed to leave the office for fear I'd be surrounded and I was a wide-eyed 24-year-old very new to the world of politics. But there David was in the studio, calmly presenting as if nothing was unusual about this particular edition. And this is the magic of David, he'd been doing QT since 1994 and had seen it all before. He hit a groove in every program and wouldn't take nonsense from anybody. Now he's stepping down after 25 years, it's a good time to reflect on just how important he has been to Britain's political conversation. He would sit down with the editor before each show and sort through the suggested questions from the audience and work out what were the most important topics for that bit of the country. It felt like a smooth routine without it ever feeling routine. I don't think I ever saw or heard about him getting flustered. I got flustered the first time I saw him smoke, it wasn't frequent but he did pick Havana cigars as his treat item on desert island discs. I worked on that program for nearly 200 episodes. It turned from a broadcast into a huge conversation across the web, whether that be insightful commentary, people saying just how biased the BBC is, it isn't, or that question time is rubbish and they couldn't understand why anyone watched it. All while watching it themselves. And David was up with the social conversation as well as anyone around him. I was chatting to former series producer Brendan Miller about him. He spent so much time in David's company, despite his authority, journalistic curiosity, and so on, I think the thing that really marks him out is his charm, he tells me. He has a sense of mischief, a sense of humor, which is really missing when you look at so many other senior journalistic broadcasters. I always noticed how he would operate depending on the panel. When a strong lineup was in place he would let them provide the sparks, but if it was a slightly dour collection of politicians, then he would push forward and add energy and buy it to the mix. Another characteristic that struck me when working with him was his intellectual humility. He always curious and open-minded. He was always hungry to be told things, even if it was something he knew inside out. I remember as a very young producer lecturing him all about the 1975 referendum which I'd spent the week researching, only to realize that of course he knew all about it. After all, this is a journalist who has interviewed every prime minister since Wilson. So many journalists don't know how to put their ego to one side for a while, I know that they strut. Dimbleby always made it incredibly comfortable for people to brief him, even the most junior researcher. The result was he was always really well informed and people loved working with him. In television there's often stories about senior journalists and presenters who are stressed, competitive individuals, who often nurse deep neuroses. There's none of that with David. He is genuine, funny when I worked on the show he was always incredibly generous and interested in everyone working there from top to bottom. Question time was and is still important because it acts as people's introduction to the world of politics and allows more people a voice on a national stage than anywhere else. It even allows satirical robots moments of fame. David's introduction to Dinobot, the robotic version of him who exists on Twitter, was my doing. Former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott ended up mentioning it on the program. And the social media behemoth it became is, in part, because everyone wanted to talk about David, whether it be his chairmanship or simply his tie. And, to anyone under the age of 40, question time is David Dimlibby. Even though David thinks differently, the secret of question time is that it all springs from the question time audience, David regularly used to say in his pre-recording speech to the people gathered for the program. And the reasons politicians are frightened of coming on is they're frightened of you and the reason they like watching it is because it gives them a feel of what people really think about politics in any given week. But another secret is just how open David is with the audience and the sense of trust they rightly put in him to hold power to account. Opinion Nicky Morgan is smart, 
not vain, to avoid unflattering BBC lighting 18 things to watch on TV other than the World Cup BBC dad Professor Kelly calls historic Trump and Kim summoned thin and depressing even George Galloway has described question time as the closest thing we've got to proper democratic scrutiny of the political process. Under David stewardship, QT has become a staple of every Thursday evening for over 2 million people. He will be a difficult act to follow. Currently, Kirst I Wark is the front runner, but I wouldn't be surprised if Miss Hul Hussein was the person chosen. It's interesting that Laura Quentzberg isn't in any of the odds lists I've seen. While BBC political editor is perhaps the biggest job in UK journalism, I don't think it's that improbable that she takes over. Also, not